So much trouble in the world today Like parents who make you put all your laundry away So oppressed inside these prison walls Dad went out for coffee and only got me a talk Sleep, dreaming about the beams. You turn on the lights and you pull back the sheets. It's a bad hair week. Now I gotta go to school. And you want a song and dance like I'm in a musical. But that ain't happening now. Nah, Cause my life is lame. I'm not a taxi driver, driving brother to another game. For the billionth time, you ask me how's your day. When you already know exactly what I'm gonna say. Fine. Congratulations to these parents in the nation My room is not a mess, it's just a renovation I plugged up the drain, didn't burn down the block Gonna ground me for life, shake my head like the rock I dose through my test, it shouldn't ruin your day Just a couple more points off of my GPA Little makeup on the seat, man I think you can call It's just Aunt Becky coming over and she isn't the Pope that God has for you, the way that you're designed, the way that you're made, the way that you're gifted, and what that's going to look like as it unfolds. It's just so easy to compare yourself. I started to feel very insecure. I felt like betrayed. I wanted to have these friends that were in the cool crowd. I can be involved with missions work right where I am. Be brave enough to be on the outside who you actually are on the inside. Hey girls, welcome back. We're in the middle of talking about a lot of relationships. 
Now it's time to deal with those people you probably spend the most time with, whether you want to or not, your parents. You want your independence, but your parents are the gatekeepers. Most of the time, they really want what's best for you, but sometimes they don't seem to know what they're doing or they make mistakes. Jen has more words of wisdom on these relationships from scripture as a parent herself. Let's watch Mercedes, who feels like her parents smother her. Sound familiar? Growing up, I had a lot of friends and their families gave them privileges to do things that I thought I, would, I should be able to do as a teenager going into high school. Like go to the basketball games and, you know, spend the night at places and go to the mall, you know. I think that just hearing the word no a lot over and over really kind of fostered, well, why not? And who are you to tell me, like, who are you to crack down now, you know, right when I get into high school where, like, I'm supposed to have all this freedom and this is the time where, like, you know, people are going to movies and um, spending the night and hanging out with boys, you know? That's normal, so why, why, why is it a no for me? I was just like, kind of took it upon myself and decided that I wanted to leave when I wanted to leave and not call home or not tell my mom. She'd literally call every person in town. She'd be like, Mercedes, you need to come home. Or she'd tell the parent, can you bring her home? And I would get in trouble. And it just hurt me. I was just like, this is weird. This is unreasonable. This is not, like, you don't have a legitimate excuse, you know? Um, so after you get a lot of those, where you just really see that she's not bending, it just, you just take it upon yourself and you're just like, well, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I think that the Lord is definitely still teaching me um, why authority is so important, but I'm definitely not there yet. <laughs> that story <laughs> by Mercedes, I'm, I'm chuckling, I'm tickled by it because I remember um, being a teenager and I basically have two of the best parents ever um, who weren't even terribly restrictive or unreasonable. And I remember thinking as a teenager, oh, my parents don't understand anything about me and they're against me and they don't want me to be happy. I just remember feeling that way. And I know that a lot of you do too, um, that you just think us parents are just so lame. And, and we don't want you to have a good time and we don't want you to have fun and we're just here to ruin all your, your joy. I'm gonna tell you something, and this is the truth. Honestly, we don't want to rule you. We want to lead you. We want to mentor you. Um, we really do. You'll see this one day when you're a parent, but we have our eye on your future so much. We think so much about your relationships, about what's next for you, about where you're going to go to college, about what kind of person you're going to marry, um, about what kind of relationships you're going to have. We think about your safety. We think about your trajectory and your life experiences. We want you to be so well, and we want to protect you from some of the same crashing and burning that we did at your age. And so I want to tell you a couple things that are going to make this harder. Um, and to me, the tip top number one thing that is going to make this relationship with your parents harder than it needs to be is lying. If you spend a whole lot of your time making stuff up, covering stuff up, um, doing things outside of what your parents know, um, I want to tell you how badly that damages trust between a parent and a, and a, and a kid. And so I cannot urge you enough um, to not lie to your parents. And it's not like this lame children's storybook. Don't lie to your parents. I mean, don't lie to your parents. Um, once that is ruptured, once that trust is broken, it's so hard to rebuild. It can be rebuilt. Of course it can be rebuilt um, because teenagers have been lying to their parents since the beginning of time. It can be rebuilt, but it is hard. Um, and it takes a lot longer um, than just to protect what you had in the first place. Um, I want to talk to you for a second about how to talk to your parents and how to have conversations with your parents. James, the whole book of James is very instructive on healthy relationships and on healthy communication. This is what it says in chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, 
and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. So this is where you get a chance to show your maturity. Seriously, when it comes to how you talk to your parents. Um, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Um, in our family, we kind of have a take five rule um, because it's very human to have a lot of emotions. It's human to get angry. That's, it's not as if that's unusual or outside of the bounds, but it does mess up a conversation, that's for sure. So when me and my kid start feeling at odds, when the levels start rising, when the tension starts rising, when the tone of voice starts rising, we're like, you know what, let's take five minutes. Let's just take five minutes. You go somewhere over there. I'm gonna come somewhere over here. We're gonna give it five minutes to cool down. Y'all, it's almost like a miracle what five minutes can do. Um, just to let your heart rate return to normal, to let your mind catch up with your mouth, um, to think through, how do I want this to go? What's my end game here? Do I just wanna have a fight? I mean, am I just looking for a big blow up? Or am I, do I have a means to an end here? Am I, am I after something? And do I want understanding? Um, do I want to really discuss something with my mom or with my dad? Um, do I, what am I going for here? Talk to us. Talk to us about what you want. Talk to us about the freedoms you think that you should have. In fact, I asked my daughter this morning, I said, Sydney, I'm going to be talking to teen girls in a video series. What should I tell teen girls? And she said, I just think that you need to figure out a way to give us all freedoms. So she has ideas too. We want to hear from you. Sit down with us in a calm way, with your voice controlled, with your anger under controlled, and earn it. Earn it. Okay, you can earn it by telling us the truth. Okay, you can earn it by following our rules and then having discussions with us in a healthy manner about how you think those rules should change. Understand, we're trying to figure this out too. We're trying to figure out how much of the line to let out with you as you get older and older and older. And I'm telling you, you can earn that. You can earn that with your choices. You can earn that with your respect. Um, because honestly, our goal is to send you off at 18. And at that point, the line is out. Um, and so we are also trying to figure this out. Help us, okay? And we would love to be let in. I, I don't know how else to tell you this, but let us in to your life. Let us into your inner thought life. Um, let us into what's working out in your heart, in your mind. Let us into your struggles. You cannot know how much we love you and how much we care about you. And we want to be a part of that for you. We really, really do. You guys, just last night, I sat on my porch with my teenagers and my husband until late in the night. And one of my kids, one of my teens told me something that he had buried for the last couple of years, something I wanted to know. I would have wanted to know it. I would have wanted to help him through it. I, would have, I wanted to come alongside of him. And I said, baby, I, I can't believe, why didn't you tell us this? Like, why, why didn't you tell us? And he said, I just did not know how you would react. And I want you to hear me say as a mom who's pretty ordinary and like most of your moms too, don't keep us out because you're afraid how we're gonna react. Don't hold back on a conversation because you don't want the confrontation or you're not sure what we're gonna say. Let us in. Nobody on planet earth is more for you than we are, okay? We are here for you. And when we have authority over you, it's not to rule you, it's not to dominate you, it's not to destroy your life. It's because we love you and because we're so for you. And I'm telling you, the more you let your parents in, okay, the more sturdy and stable and strong that relationship gets. Let that relationship have a chance to grow, to grow really, really deep roots um, in this important season of your life where we just want to help lead you all the way to young adulthood. My parents, their relationship had always been kind of rocky. When we got older, they got divorced and it was a really nasty divorce. I just felt really lost. Our mom, she tried really hard, but it was just really hard for her to actually have to parent. And so I felt like I was my own parent. And so sometimes when she tried to parent me, I would like backlash at her. I felt like a bitterness towards her for making me go through all of that and not having it be as easy as other kids had it. My younger sister had been going to church and so she got me into going to church. It was amazing. It was like instantly I felt loved and I felt the, the things that I'd been missing at home, I felt at church and with those people and in God. Everything that I had been missing, I found that. And I found the stability and I found the love that I had been missing. I changed. It was really cool. I just changed into like a new person. 
Because me and my sister are both Christians now, it's still really hard with my mom. If I messed up or if I did something wrong or if I lost my temper, if I was late, it was thrown in my face like, you're, you're a Christian, you need to do this. How come you don't respect me? I've been called a hypocrite multiple times. Like, if I do something wrong, like you're such a hypocrite. Um, you go to church, but you do this. My mom proclaims that she's a Christian, but at the same time, it's like she drinks, she can party like a rock star. And so it's just really hard because she does have that double standard going on. And I worry, and I know my sisters worry, like, is our mom really gonna go to heaven? Are we gonna get to spend eternity with her? And it's, it's really scary, and it's the same way with my dad. Growing up with that, it's just really hard. Let's take a different gear from the last session um, where we talked about parents who are healthy and for you and on your side um, and operating in your best interest and leading you well. I want to talk about another side of that because uh, there's another reality um, that is equally as true and it's happening for a lot of you because the fact is because parents are human beings and there's no way around that. Some of you have parents who are struggling. Um, some of you have parents who are not Christians. Um, some of you have parents who left or have not loved you well. And I wish that I could fix that for you and I wish I could fix that for all the kids um, who are in homes right now where parents are struggling or dysfunctional or abusive um, or lost or confused. I keep thinking about Noah, this, you know, this crazy story in Genesis um, 6. And of course, he was surrounded by unbelievers who didn't love God, didn't know God, just living a life of just destruction. And it was just basically chaos around Noah at all times. And so, of course, God asks him to build this ark. And, you know, the dimensions of it alone are ridiculous. Um, there was no need for it. He's building it on dry ground. And it was such a source of mockery and confusion for his community and shame and it took so long to build and yet in the midst of all that in, in the midst of what God says about Noah being sort of the only righteous man he kept building he kept building he stayed true to the course no matter what anybody else said no matter how he and his family were mistreated and I think about you and how so many of you feel like Noah probably um, that you're just surrounded by people who don't love God the way that you do or they're they are unable able to right now, um, or they're just so broken, their life is so chaotic, um, they're just in such a mess that it's making your life harder, um, it, it's bleeding out to you. What I want to tell you is keep building, keep building. Um, you have so much ahead of you, you have so much future left. Keep building because what God is doing in you, what he has started, he's going to see it through to a good work. Okay, He is, he is going to nurture everything that is holy and good and true and right in you. Um, and there is there's such a future for you. Keep building even when nobody in your house is building with you. And I know that that is hard. Oh my gosh. I so know that that is hard. Look at, I'm going to read out of 2 Timothy chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. There's that same bit of advice. Continue, continue, keep building. Um, I wish you could wait until you were older to have to discover this, but here's a fact. A lot of gospel stuff is hard. Um, a lot of the things that God calls us to, the characteristics he calls us to put on, are incredibly challenging as we live in a broken world with broken people, especially for some of you who are in a relationship where you are supposed to be cared for by a parent. But instead, right now, the parent is off the rails. Okay, and it's just so upside down. It's so unfair. Um, but here's the fact. Um, the work of the gospel, the substance of the gospel is hard stuff like forgiveness, compassion, uh, prayer for people who are hurting you, endurance, strength. These are not easy to come by. Okay, these are not easy to exercise. They're not easy to demonstrate. They're incredibly challenging, but you're able 
You're capable. Um, I absolutely know that you are. I know that your, your spirit and your soul are strong enough for this. You can do it. Does it hurt? Yes. Okay. Is it unfair? Yes. Um, should this scenario for you be different? Should you be cared for better? Yes. But the fact remains that this side of heaven, this is the world we live in. And so in the meantime, continue building. God has given you everything you need for righteousness and for godliness and for endurance and for strength. You have the tools. You do. Maybe that means in this season that you lean deeply and you lean hard on spiritual mentors outside of your family, right? That you stay connected to your church and to your youth leaders and to friends who love you and their parents who love you. Um, sometimes we just piecemeal together our parenting. Does that make sense? If it doesn't necessarily come from the four walls we live in, we get it from wherever we can get it, okay? We put it together. I'm telling you that God cares for you and He cares for your future and He can sustain you in this. It does not make it easy. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna hurt and it doesn't even mean that it's not gonna leave scars, but you can do this, okay? You can see this through. In the meantime, pray for your parents. Pray for them so deeply because here's the thing, God loves them too. Um, he loves them. He has a plan for them. He has told us in his scripture that he desires that nobody perish, but that every single person come to him through Jesus. And so he loves your mom. He loves your dad. And whatever wounded or is broken in them, he can heal that too. But you know what? That's not your responsibility. That's not the work that you can do. That's not your role. Okay? That's God-sized work that is way above your pay grade. So don't take on that responsibility or the guilt for it. You pray for your parents, okay? And in the meantime, keep building, keep building. Each and every one of you has a different story when it comes to your parents. Some of you have parents who are your number one fans. Others might hardly know or see their parents anymore. Or maybe your parents don't believe in what you believe or love God the way you do. That's hard too. Whatever your story, this truth remains. God is for you and he has equipped you to build relationships of love, grace, and forgiveness. As you head into your Bible study time, think about your parents. Do they support, challenge, and love you in an empowering way? Or are your parents hurtful or distant? Who could you talk to about your pain? Take some time to listen to and support each other. See you next time.